I wanna challenge the presumption that it's just a gift that comes pre-installed from birth. We actually live in a society that demonizes and vilifies this thing that could be the unlock for so much of our greatness. I can't think of a more authentic and fulfilling and connected existence and way to get to be in the world, but it requires a skill set, a skill set of being able to. The number one most important skill, I believe, to develop in this life and why it's even more important, I think, than most people think, is verbal ability. And I wanna explain why that is and hopefully enroll you into honestly doing like whatever it takes to improve your verbal ability because of what it's gonna make possible for you in life, again, in ways that m might go beyond what you might be thinking is what I'm about to say. Now, before I, I get into this, I just, I have to say, I already made this video. Unfortunately, there was no camera present, although that might've been fortunate because I was actually in the shower. But this morning, I like had this thought about this idea and I just, I verbalized the crap out of this idea in the shower with no one around. And again, thankfully no camera. So I'm trying to recreate the magic of my morning shower here by sharing with you uh, my thoughts on verbal ability. First of all, the, the context for the, the original thought around verbal ability is that I get often um, commented to about my verbal ability, like that on the, on the spectrum of things that, you know, any human can be good at or not good at. I'm, you know, we all have all the same things on that spectrum and we're all good or not good at different things. Based, and even that term good is, you know, other people, the the aggregation of other people's feedback, right? Or, or opinion. I am generally viewed as an articulate, well-spoken person. I, I get that feedback from people. And I think there's a sort of a presumption that A, that's a, that's a natural gift. Like that's just something I was born with. That's the presumption. There's a presumption that's something I was born with. But, and there's also a, a perspective that I agree with that it's a huge advantage in this world. And like I said, I think it's the, probably the single most important skill to develop in terms of being able to kind of create a rising tide in your life that lifts all the different boats of your life, all the different things that you wanna to start to become true in your life. And, and I mean, think about what are all the things in my life that could be positively impacted by improving how I speak? You know, it could be the relationships, possibilities that open up to me, the romantic relationships, the professional relationships, the friend relationships, the learning and, and teacher relationships that open up to me simply by improving my verbal ability. The confidence, the, the personality, the charisma, the ability to engage people, the ability to earn more money at work, the ability to sell. I mean, I could go on and on and on the list of all the things that having a well-developed verbal ability makes more possible in life. And so I think everybody sort of naturally gets that part of the value of verbal ability. And again, that's where it's obviously seen as a pretty pretty significant advantage and that I get a lot of feedback in my life that that being one of my perceived gifts is sort of often attributed to, you know, some of the things that I've been able to successfully do in my life are, are sometimes attributed, oh, well, you're good at that, therefore you've been able to do these things. And that's that's all potentially true. But I think that I wanna challenge the presumption that it's just a gift that comes pre-installed from birth and I also wanna challenge the notion that the reason to do it is because of all the things that it's gonna help us get or help us accomplish or achieve in life. First of all, I was not, I don't believe I was born particularly gifted or articulate. I think that I was born into an environment where I was encouraged to have a voice, but I think primarily the reason I have a pretty well-developed verbal ability is because I grew up feeling very, very unseen by the world. I grew up with a genetic disorder called Wardenberg syndrome, which uh, is, a, is a, I would say, carries a mild craniofacial affectation, which is a way of saying that my face looks a little bit not like most people, but not extremely not like most people, right? Um, there's some craniofacial disorders that are, you know, maybe un politically incorrect to say, but they're almost hard to look at, right? Mine is more of like a, so what's up with his face a little bit? I don't know, it's kind of weird, right? But as a kid, it was A, it was more more pronounced and B, it was a lot, uh, it came with a lot higher price tag because kids are mean and I just got bullied so badly and I felt so unseen. It was kind of like the inverse of being a really pretty girl who feels like you're just constantly being sexualized in this world. For me, being like a slightly weird looking 
dude who wasn't terribly athletic or um, you know handsome or you know I wasn't actually initially verbally gifted or charming or you know hilarious or any such thing like. I felt like I wasn't seen for truly who I was. I, the, the seeing of me stopped at the surface of my face. And so I had this feeling of being a person on the inside that was not being seen on the outside. And at a pretty early age, you know, I obviously had some experience of maybe saying a thing or having an idea and verbalizing it that, you know, some adult in my life, I remember the feeling, not the actual moment, but this feeling of like, oh, well, if I say the right thing, if I say the engaging thing or the intelligent thing or the witty thing or whatever, like people will suddenly see me. They'll suddenly feel me. I'll suddenly get that connection that I'm so desperate for that I feel like I don't get because I'm judged just on, on the basis of how I look. And so I, early in my life, I ascribed a value to being able to well articulate my thoughts and to having unique thoughts that were worthy of articulating because a well articulated novel or interesting or unique thought was a form of currency that I could offer the world to be seen and get that need met for myself. That value system developed pretty early on. This is a, uh, there's a, a science or a, it's a sub discipline of philosophy called axiology, which is the development of our value systems. And so um, I had an early axiological experience that put a weight on the ability to have interesting thoughts and articulate them well. I don't remember the moment. Like I said, I just remember the feeling. This wasn't all clear to me then. I'm looking backwards now, having done a lot of therapy and, and a lot of self-reflection and realizing that a lot of that stemmed from feeling ugly or, or deformed or, or unseen as the person that I was on the inside. I guess that's my first point is to start to associate the ability to articulate our thoughts well as a way of being truly seen for who we are not how we present, or not at least not how we present physically or visually. And then to look within and say, well, how much value do I place on that, right? Like I'm gonna get the need to be seen met somehow. Some of us, and, and it's all it's obviously a blend, it's no one of these for any one person exclusively, but you know, we're all trying to be seen in different ways. For some of us, it's just spending hours at the gym so we can get that that cut look that we think helps us be seen in the world. For some of us, it's you know, getting our hair done and our cosmetics routine and maybe like fretting about my acne because I want them looking at me, not that. Or um, for some of us, it's, you know, being great at, a, at sports or great at a, you know, artistic performance or, or whatever the thing is, or being a standout at work or, or, you know, all the different ways that we strive to be seen. But what I think I was realizing in the shower this morning is that the most authentic way to be seen is for the only part of ourselves that we can truly say either, you know, entirely come from us or for whatever created us but still through the, through us or or through myself right that the the most authentic way for me to express my meanness the essence of me the the meanness of me is through the thoughts that i think in my head right and so if i can't articulate them i actually cannot be seen i cannot be known fully and to start to value it for that reason because think of the pressure that it will take off of us in life if we can start to be seen and felt and known and understood for the thoughts that we think that are so essentially us, so much more essentially us than the clothes that we wear or the body that we put them on or you know the hairstyle that we have or the output of our work or the achievement of this thing or that thing, all this stuff that changes and deteriorates over time. If we can truly be known by our thoughts through our ability to articulate our thoughts, that is the most authentic way that we can connect. And our thoughts and the ability to articulate our thoughts, not just the words, but the tone and the style of the delivery actually end up becoming the foundations of the feelings that we as human beings produce in each other. This is why it's one of my, one of my favorite quotes from Shakespeare, and, and it's also a, a really body, pretty hilarious sexual, pun is he says in Two Gentlemen of Verona that the way to woo a woman for a man is to be a cunning linguist, which is obviously a play on cunnilingus, right? Oral sex, but a cunning linguist, one who is astute in their linguistic ability, one who is well-spoken is the way to woo a beautiful woman, says Shakespeare, right? And it's a way to do it authentically because it's, it's through 
bringing our, our essence out into the world in a way that we know is pure because it's our thoughts. It's our literal thoughts. It's the purest form of us. And to woo a woman for that reason, rather than because I, I flattered her or I, you know, lavished money and gifts upon her, or I did some other material thing that just creates pressure and is hard to sustain over time. But to start to, and it's not just, you know, romantic relationships, but to start to draw people into your world who are literally drawn to you because of your thoughts and your ability to communicate them. I can't think of a more authentic and fulfilling and connected existence and way to get to be in the world, but it requires a skill set, a skill set of being able to verbalize our thoughts well. And so that's my attempt to enroll people in going, man, what am I doing in my life to actually improve my ability to articulate my thoughts. And there's an element of this that I haven't actually referenced, which is the feedback loop that happens where as we develop the things we do to develop our ability to articulate our thoughts and to increase our verbal ability are things, fundamentally it's reading, writing, and speaking, right? It's like to get better with words, we use words in their various forms, the written word, the spoken word, um, and the red word. And, but as we do that, what are we actually informing? We're not just developing our aptitude with language, we're also feeding our thoughts. We're creating better thoughts. We're creating thoughts that are more worthy of articulation by feeding our thoughts through the articulation of other worthy thoughts from others. That is how we build the skill of better articulating our own thoughts. That's also the cool part, right? Because like I said, there's, there's two parts to this. There's not just articulating our thoughts well, but there's also having novel, interesting thoughts that are worthy of articulating. And and I, I think I just put a weird emphasis on artic, articulating, not articulating. Um, you can I obsess about these things, but it's this wonderful thing. And by the way, people that do a lot of this, how does society tend to label them or categorize them? Nerds. Oh, he's a bookworm. Oh, he's the you know the kid in the corner that just wants to read and doesn't want to play at recess, right? The and, and, and so we we actually live in a society that somewhat, especially at younger ages, demonizes and vilifies this thing that could be the unlock for so much of our greatness and so much of our ability in the world and so many of the things that we want and so many of the things that we think we're gonna go get through these other more exhausting, more unsustainable methods. Again, like physical performance or maintaining physical beauty or other things that sort of deteriorate over time when, my gosh, how many of our possibilities could be unlocked and our dreams could come true and also our you know, internal itch for a rich inner life could be scratched if we would just feed our thoughts with other well-articulated thoughts and in so doing, improve the quality of our own thoughts and increase our ability to articulate our thoughts so that we can become part of that exchange for other people as well. And so those are my thoughts articulated as they are. I don't know if I quite got where I got this morning in the shower, but um, it's better to do it with clothes on. So anyway, hope this is helpful.